Hello, and thank you for joining the Blueberry Educational Conference as part of the 2021 Virtual Southeast Regional Fruit and Vegetable Conference. I'm Kim Post, a County Ag Agent with the University of Georgia, and I'll be your moderator for this presentation. I'd like to thank Meister Media for sponsoring the 2021 Blueberry Educational Conference. Let's watch the short video provided by Meister Media. Pesticide CEU and CCA credits are available for most presentations offered during the live Southeast Regional Conference. Check the Pesticide CEU Guide for a list of approved presentations and participating states. The Pesticide CEU Guide is located in the Event Resources tab under the Media Player, and the guide is also available at the Resource Center located on the main menu of the conference platform. Please note that pesticide credits will only be available for registered attendees and only during the live conference. Credits will not be available for on-demand presentations. There is a simple three-step process to receive pesticide CEU and CCA credits. First, go to the audience chat box located on the left side of your screen and type your first name, last name, and the state that you need credits for. Again, go to the audience chat box on the left side of your screen and type your first name, last name, and the states that you need credits. You need to do this for every presentation that you want credits for. The second step is to sign out at the end of every presentation. So to sign out, you just type your last name, first name, last name, and state again in that chat box, and you will be reminded to sign out at the end of the presentation. The third step is to complete the pesticide CEU registration. You only have to complete this registration one time during the conference, and this is not required for every presentation. To do that, you go to the pesticide CEU registration web link in the pesticide CEU guide on the event resources tab under the media player. There will be a live Q&A for this presentation, so after Mark is completed with his presentation, we will move into that section. Don't forget to thank our 2021 conference sponsors and exhibitors for visiting the virtual trade show and the featured products pavilion. Lastly, don't forget to join us each morning for coffee chats and each evening for networking, and check the conference agenda for details. Now I'd like to introduce Mark Zarnata with the University of Georgia who presenting about weed control in young blueberries. Take it away, Mark. All right, hopefully can you hear me fine? Yes, we can. Mm, great. Okay, well, I'll get started then. And I got the 30 minutes basically or 20 minutes and a couple minutes for questions. Is that correct? Yes. Great. All right. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, just a good brief update here about what's going on with uh, various and uh, the uh, the biggest thing is on probably is what's going on with Surfland. I had to make a bunch of phone calls last month to find out exactly what's going on. But anyway, uh, I just click the slides here to get more kind of move. Okay, it'll work that way too. All right. Um, you know, as you know. Uh, when you're trying to go blueberry plants, uh, particularly from liners, like you see here in the slide, uh, you know, there's a lot of options that you can do. <laughs> and of course, I knew that was going to happen. Um, so anyway, um, the, uh, um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, thanks for the election today. We have to have my talk and I've gotten about 15 calls from uh, either the, the Republican convention or the Democratic convention. But anyway, um, when you're trying to grow young blueberry plants, there's we have limited options on what we can do as far as herbicides. And a lot of people are looking at trying to grow blueberries and they're, they're using these uh, container-like things that they can you know, shield the blueberries from particularly Roundup or Paraquat. You, you can up to that now with avoiding a lot of problems that you can have from damage, particularly on long, these young plants with green stems that will be highly injured by glyphosate or you know roundup or paraquat and uh or even uh a finale you know which is uh, not finale but glyphosate was sold on a lot of different trade names you should recognize it from the trade names cheetah or reckon 
um, uh, or Ignite would be the three of the popular names for that. You know, and when, when you're growing berries in a larger size field or larger berries, uh, there's a lot more options that are available and use a lot of burn down type products as well as pre-emergent herbicides in this situation with not worrying about damaging the plant too much. A lot of it has to do with the canes not being green uh, and they're hardened off and actually spray underneath and even come in contact with some of the canes with a lot of the herbicides without any issues. Um, and of course, uh, a lot of people try to use mulches um, and I I've seen miserable fail failures with these. Uh, we're using ones where the weeds germinate underneath the mulch, in, in, underneath the mulches. <laughs> and then, uh, and, uh, let's see here, uh, the, uh, underneath the mulches. And uh, anyway, uh, you can see what can happen. And then also, this is the biggest problem that you have with a lot of the mulches that they use. Uh, they'll have a fabric or a plastic that we plant the blueberry plant in, in, in you know, every four feet in, in this row. And then, of course, you get because they didn't put any pre-emergent herbs. And then they call me up and want me to tell me what silver bullet can I spray over that to kill everything, all the weeds, but not blueberry plant. And, of course, there is nothing. So uh, more than likely, you're, you need to use the emergent herbicide because they're right over top of the fabric if they have to, or the plastic, and or you know I really think you can get away spraying underneath also with a product like Surfland. And uh, anyway, uh, you could, could uh, do that. But but these are the type of problems that you're going to encounter with with the young berries, and also situations like this where they have planted out one gallon plants. Uh, it was invaded by alligator weed, and they had a very, very difficult time. The person that they abandoned this field because there was nothing I could suggest to him to help him out. So, but of course, you know, and with any weed control situations, there, there's 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 four main things that that I always tell people. Of course, some of these are not available, but to blueberry people, but you know, physical removal, just hand removing or tilling, physical barrier you often. Uh, mulches or fabrics or plastics, and of course, there's biocontrol in a lot of a lot of other fields that we utilize. Uh, so the nursery industry has some of these available to them, and of course, chemical weed control, which would be all your conventional herbicides. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to talk mainly about the, the, the chemical here, just quickly, and what's going on, and then of course, some of the physical barriers that you, that I'm sure you're familiar with. But uh, you know, of course, tillage is real popular, and you can use this in and blueberry production works fairly well in most situations. Uh, of course, you know, common sense things when you're using a tillage type situation like this, uh, you can damage the roots of those plants and, of course, introduce, you know, disease problems. And, you know, you can also bring up seed, the seed bank, which is there, and bring up weed seed that can germinate. And, you know, if you do this, it, you're going to have to do it quite often when, when you see the weeds germinating and starting to come up when they're really small. And, uh, you're going to do this, and a lot of people shy away from these type, uh, using uh, like this in blueberries, and it doesn't work that, or it, you can have problems with it, and it steers people towards using chemical weed control. So, uh, you know, most people go to where you'll use uh, when you're growing either rabbit eye blueberries or high bush. And rabbit eyes, use, I'd still use fabric or a mulch or a plastic mulch like what you're seeing on the left hand side. And that's where you'll, you know, the, the, this is where they would plant among the plants into, into this plastic. And they'll, uh, they'll usually put a mulch or some type of uh, bark down, till that in, and then plant the blueberries into that. And when you have high bush situation, they'll generally put lots of bark on the ground. They'll elevate the blueberries off the ground, lay about eight to 12 inches of bark to plant into that. So, you know, barrier type thing for far as weed control. And in both of these situations, you're probably not going to see too many weed problems where you have such, so much mulch mixed in in this situation. And, uh, you know, you might get away with a year or two without too many weed problems. But in the in the left eye with uh, rabbit eye type berries, you see, anytime you have soil in the mix, uh, that can lead to weed type issues. Uh, you know, small weed type problems, and it's particularly going to be a problem with uh, with with smaller plants that are planted from plugs. So, anyway, uh, let me see. Um, back here, oh, went too far. One more, there we go. Uh, and you can see there's 
I see lots of people utilizing this situation, this uh, we we control uh, method where they're putting uh, you know cartons around their plants, and I think this is fairly successful. Most people are using Mixon is a, is one of the growers that has several hundred acres. I see in this every time I'm in South Georgia, I seem to see more of these carton type situations where they're putting these down, and it's fine. You know, use a pre-emergent or post-emergent herbicide right up next to the plant. You could use a fan spray, spray right up to that container, and you shouldn't have any problems as far as damaging the plant. The plant basically grows out of that container. The container will eventually disintegrate, and you should be good to go. But there are going to be situations where, you know, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, you're not, And there's also going to be weeds come in to the, you know, inside this container. And I can see that happening a lot, particularly if you're planting blueberries into row crop type uh, situations where you're going to see a lot of weeds coming through. And again, once that starts going on and you have a small two to four inch little pl blueberry plug, you're going to have some problems with, with weed control. And you're probably going to want to use some conventional type herbicides. Um, and there are a lot of people, just so you know, uh, I was in New Zealand uh, about two years ago and uh, there's, People growing, uh, I was really amazed to see people growing blueberries in containers. And uh, anyway, this is just a picture I, I pulled off the net or the internet, and uh, you can see what they're doing. And they're also using a lot, doing this with, with uh, cane berries, particularly raspberries. You know, they're growing them in containers. They actually take the containers and trick the plants thinking they've gone through a dormant cycle and bring them back out again and continue to get more and more berries, you know, off of them. But anyway, in, in these type situations, uh, you know, you, you really wouldn't have too much of a weed problem, but anytime you go with it, down to a soil, you know, you know, all the games change. So, uh, but it's real interesting to see how they're onto these type of plants where you're planting container, running and replanting and starting over again. So I'm going to think about these are the type of thing you can do. I think in the organic situations, this, this is a very interesting thing, but the capital costs are incredible, sure. So, uh, you know, as far as chemical weed control, they're, uh, they're, they're usually used in combination with other methods, you know, like hand weed, uh, tillage, stuff like this, mulches. And uh, But the reason we have chemicals it's because of the time, and you would, and in our, particularly in Georgia, it would be almost impossible to run any of the agricultural systems that I deal with, the ornamental, ornamental um, industries, and any small fruit and orchard floor management. It, it's virtually impossible to be able to run a, a productive, profitable business without them. So, uh, but anyway, I'll talk a little bit about what, what we have and, and really what happened to Surfland. So, anyway. Uh, but, you know, the, the herbicides, you know, we have pre-emergent herbicides and post-emergent herbicides. Hopefully most of you have had to bear soil or mulch before the seeds germinate. You need a rain event in order to activate them and move them into the soil. And then post herbicides would be like glyphosate or ignite. Uh, you apply it any time after the seeds have germinated and need a certain period of dryness on it. A lot of them don't have any pre-emergent activity. So... Uh, available that we have uh, that this label for pre list here and uh, anyway there there's lots of, uh, of, of of these products that are available but not all of these can stop, obviously on really young plants and I really want to focus on a few of these here to talk about what what which ones you I'd recommend using you know there, there I, people call me a lot of times about weed control and you know a lot of times I have to ask you lots of questions to find out what you have because if I'm out there looking at them, I can't really tell you. But, you know, some people plant liners, which are little two to four inch plants. Some people plant larger size plants that are, you know, one to, get, one to up to three gallon. And, you know, those plants are going to be much more stout and going to be able to use other, pretty much this whole array of herbicides on them much quicker. A little liner that's coming up, you know, it's going to take a few years for that plant to get up and running. So, uh, but anyway, for young, for pre-control and young blueberries, what we got labeled for, uh, Plants less than two years in the ground are, are isoxabin, which is sold under the trellis and gallery TV. Uh, uh, just have surfland, which is a rhizolin, and simsy, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, and all these products really need a tank mix partner to work well together. 
and I recommend people to, to mix uh, you know surf land with a rise land or surf land with isoxamid. Uh, you know, with a loss of rise that really hampers us on being able to control weeds in the field. And uh, you know, surf land was was la- the, the the problem with it. I talked to you a little bit about it last year. I just found out about it. But the last manufacturing plant that ma- manufactured the the actual active burned down in in November last year of 2019, and pretty much that was it. Nobody else making it. So if you bought some surf land, you got it from old stock, and then pretty much when this when all that stock is depleted, you're not gonna be able to get it anymore. Only I did finally talk to AD. MA and UPL, those are the only two other major people that distribute Ar- Arizalin or the major companies that do. And uh, UPL told me it's gone, I'm not going to sell it anymore. But I did contact ADMA, uh, ADAMA, and company to bring Arizalin back. And it, but it's going to take some doing to do that. Whether or not it comes back, I don't know. But the earliest availability would be probably third quarter of 2022. So uh, we're going to have to start looking, or I know what we're going to have to do in order to alleviate this. Um, the alternatives for dual or for uh, surf land are definitely going to be, in my eyes, uh, dual magnum. I started to apply for a section 24C, which shouldn't take very long for me to do. Uh, I have all the data, but of course, dropped the ball on this when COVID hit. Chlor is going to be the product we're going to be. I'll be recommending to mix with simazine and or and um, isoxabin. Uh, and there, the, the rate we can use uh, so use dual magnum at is ten to twenty one ounces per acre. Uh, you can only make one application a year. PHI is twenty eight days, and REI is twenty four hours. You know the post harvest interval is twenty eight days, and the reentry interval is twenty four hours. And again, I with, with this would be the tank mix partner for Simazine with at two quarts. I would run this up as high as twenty one ounces with no problem. Mix it with Simazine at two quarts, trellis at a pound, uh, which is a it's either so, trellis is sold as a dry or a liquid. And uh, it'll be a pound dry and about a quart liquid per acre to be familiar with me six ounces and then court currently it's it's still under a section 24c a state by state need this was supposed to change about three years ago and still has not so a section 24 would still have to be utilized i've worked with this product quite a bit in blueberries uh, just to show you some quick data you know i really haven't seen any damage with these plant uh, on studies i've done uh over and over at four eight and twelve weeks and these are all with young less than Uh, going, I would add top of the plant. And uh, again, you can see I had very little damage if you compare them to a lot of the different uh, products I've tried. But uh, I was mixing, in fact, dual magnum with Surfland and it was not seeing anything. So that's real encouraging. I just contact again with, uh, with the uh, rep, uh, um, Syngenta, and it shouldn't be a problem to get this as Section 24C. Michigan. Uh, I think has one North Carolina and and uh, but of course uh, I think it's a severe product and really didn't need uh, dual at the time but now we're pretty much out we're not going to have surf land this is going to be the go to product um, the uh, a couple things to tell you about you know with with using pre herbicides uh, you know going to get a rain event and or irrigation event in order to activate the product that, that, that is standard with all pre-herbicides. If you put them in good uh, activity for the product and with field grown, uh, you know, application for applications a year and recommend people trying to tank mix things, uh, particularly with weaker products like uh, gallery, uh, dual and arisal and, and simazine, they would need to be tanked makes more broad spectrum of weed control and that's why you would recommend using two different products with two different modes of action and then uh the far as post control and blueberries you know there are these products that are available for uh greater than two year pips and uh, i've talked about this much with you but um and uh but there's uh, there the only thing i tell you is is that quinclorac or quinstar has a label and a full label and it, I've been very pleased with that. If you have post-emergent 
herbicide needs uh, controls a lot of unique, unique weed. Uh, the one is the, the pre is needs to try on it. If it's that, that's a really good product to use for post control particular weed. And of course, we have uh, Halo Sulfuron, which is the Sandia for controlling sedges, which is a really big problem. But we're also, hopefully, you're going to get uh, Sulfo Sulfuron at some point uh, in blueberries, also. I rumblings about that as far as a non-bearing weed control you know for young blueberry plants uh, we have the whole flight of uh, pre-emergent granular herbicides and uh, anyway uh, there's some real the, all these products th- it's real interesting to note a few of these pre-emergent herbicides have a in them like cell and uh, route and regal do- or route and both of those products are going to be actually probably not going to be able to be manufactured anymore if they do not if they cannot get the active for that products are really important for the nursery industry i deal with so to see how this all plays out but it's good possibility that route and, and xl will go away we buy on other things and snapshot is is where uh for for non for non-bearing blueberries you're trying to grow them in containers so do uh sprayables of, of dimension which is uh uh, Dithopia, I listed on the left here, and then uh, Trellis and Marengo also can be spread if you're trying to grow, grow trying to grow uh, blueberries in containers, and it, it mimics pretty much the nursery industry that I deal with heavily. So uh, anyway, and let me see here, I'm getting close to finishing. Um, let me see where I'm at. Uh, yeah, I have. I think this is the last slide. Yeah, um, for non-bearing blueberries in containers, if you ever do this, you need to make four to six applications a year. And if you're doing rooted cuttings, real small plants, you try to get into like two-inch cups. You need to avoid, try to avoid products like orizolin and pentamethylin and trifluralin and wait for about a month or two till the plants start to root out until you use those. And that's a really good timing actually to use a product like uh, Dual or Dual Magnum. And uh, th- that Dual used to be actually on a granular herbicide years ago and they took it off and we hadn't had it for about 25 years now but anyway um there, the, there's a lot of other products to choose from don't have any pretty herbicides like that or just need to wait about a month till you use a herbicide if you're using a rooted cutting like this and you have to do hand and then you remember always remember you have to get a uh, overhead irrigation in order for these products to work real well on containers and there's i don't can't think of a situation where that would not happen and then uh and just remember that these pre-herbicides are particularly non-bearing so situations work really well on herbicides on uh, plants that, you know, haven't germinated. So anyway, I guess that's it. And they cut them off anyway. And my last thing. Thank you, Mark. Um, we're now going to answer questions um, from our audience. Again, you can type your questions into that questions box at the bottom of your screen and press send. Also, as a reminder, if you're requesting pesticide credits for this presentation, you need to sign out of this presentation. So go to the audience chat box, type in your first name, last name, and the state that you need credits for. So if we don't have any questions, if Mark, if you wanted to continue a little bit more on any of those slides, feel free to. There is one question in the box that I think you addressed most of already as far as surflame replacement products, a 24C on dual magnum, and performance of trellis. Did you want to add to that at all? Yeah, I can. Um, uh, yeah, a guy, somebody asked about surflame replacement, and, and dual is uh, – the 24C, I can get that in like three months. I have to work with uh, with our state agency and the chemical uh, with Syngenta. The big thing is is that all the data I have, you have to have data proving safety, which I got plenty of that. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, Trellis is actually, a, I think, a really good product. Uh, I've been using that product for 30 years probably. I've been in this field. Um, there's a lot of people that are don't really understand that product. It's only a, a trellis or oxidant. It's sold under the trade name trellis, and it can be it can be sold in a in a dry liquid formulation. And there's also a product that you'll see gallery T and V, which means tree and vine. Trellis is the one they're moved towards, and that's hopefully the only one we're going to see. But that uh, really good at controlling broadleaf type weeds from seed, but it needs a tank mix partner, to work, and Dual would be perfect to mix with that. 
its things to the blueberry. Only needed for really young blueberry plants less than two years old. I'd highly recommend it. Uh, it's a little pricey. It's going to cost you uh, about uh, it's about a hundred dollars for a pound bottle or a one point three three pound bottle, which is a pound of active ingredient. If it's a, you know if it's a seventy five DF, and uh, but I don't know uh, the trellis price has varied a little bit. Price has come down because I think the Chinese are making this product too in a knockoff from what I've been seeing. So, uh, but it's really good for young berries. And if you're you if you're banding it on fields, you'll get a three to one ratio. So if you that cost you sixty dollars an acre, you're only going to pay. About 20 an acre and it's worth it for young blueberry plants but it needs tank mix with a tank mix partner and dual would be a perfect product uh perfect tank mix partner for it and uh north like i said i think michigan north carolina and new jersey have section 24 c's already in place and like i said i could probably have one in two to three months if uh if if i uh make sure everything all the everything's all the stars line up properly Okay. There are, oh, there's a few more. I think I can scroll down here. Yes, do, that. Um, um, do you have any experience? Are you, with... uh, are you just. Uh, hold on. There's another one here. So, just to be clear, we are recommending dual and replacing and replacing the surf land. That is correct. Um, and do you have versus granular? Uh, that's a good question. Casseron, it, it works. Uh, we don't use that much here in Georgia. It needs, you need to use that that when it's less than uh, 70 degrees outside and the soil temperatures are less than or, or, or because of volatility issues. A great pre-emergent herbicide. Granular works fine. Uh, liquid would be, be preferred. You have to have a rain event after you put it down. It does have some post-emergent weed control. It works really well at controlling with Florida or Betany that with here and, and uh, bracket worms, which we can have terrible problems with if you can time it right and get it out between November and February here in Georgia. But if you can use it and you're from the northern states, it's still a great herbicide. Uh, it's an old timey herbicide, it still works good. And uh, I get it and use it, I try it. And uh, um, let's see, uh, do you still like Allion for use in blueberries? Yes, I do. Uh, it's a fabulous herbicide. It's the best pre-emergent herbicide as far as longevity I can think of. And it provides uh, the only thing that you'll have problems with Allion is if you have nuts edge problems. You're going to have to have, uh, you're going to have to deal with the nuts edge. And that's about that. In that situation, I would recommend a product like Zeus. Um, and you apply post-emergence anytime. Uh, post-emergence can only be applied really when, when there's, uh, when, when you have, uh, what do you want to say? When there's actually really there's no uh, weeds growing, so it's just during active weed growth. So and they work on controlling weeds that are actually growing now. Um, you can spray glyphosate on dormant turf grass as long as it's green, but grass and they go dormant and, and Bahia, they really don't get in the southeast at all. And uh, Casseron liquid is supposedly being taken off the market. I don't know that Casserons come. Uh, the liquid has come going off the market. It's mainly because people aren't buying it. And uh, anyway, I don't know if it's going to eventually disappear or not. But there's a couple good uses for Casseron for controlling, uh, particularly horsetails. Out in the, in the, it might not disappear as a granular, but it's all, it's all going to be based on if they sell enough product to justify it. So anyway, I think I answered everyone's questions as quickly as I could. But if there's any other ones, uh, they can ask me and... Uh, they can always email me, uh, and I'd be try. I'd be happy to try to help them out. All right. If there's no other questions, um, we are at 4:30. So unless I see anything pop up real quick, uh, thank you, Mark, for your time and your expertise. To all the attendees, thank you for attending this presentation, and don't forget to sign out um, in order to get your pesticide credits. So do that in the audience chat box. First name, last name, and your state. All educational presentations and the virtual trade show will be available for you to access until April 30th, 2021. So you can come back if you missed a presentation or you just want to rewatch one or you need to search for a service or product provider in the virtual trade show. So if there's nothing further from you, Mark, and no more. Oh, there is another question. Would you feel safe with Allion on unbearing bushes or non-bearing bushes? Um, 
non-bearing bushes. You mean so he's probably meaning so they're talking about alley on them, probably young berries. The recommendation I think the plants have to be in the ground two years, but I've done lots of work with alley on and uh, seen minimal damage on really young plants. I wouldn't use it on plants probably less than 18 inches tall if they're not bearing uh, just because uh, I have seen some leaf damage on it. And it is a, it, it kind of actually is a herbicide. It's kind of like the product uh, I'm talking about. It's similar mode action. Um, but anyway, I would probably not use it on plants less than 18 inches. And uh, you can be pretty sloppy with Allion. I've tried it uh, on lots of different plant material, uh, you know, particularly in the nursery industry. The only thing I can really damage up is uh, liriope and mondo grass and whatnot, if you're with those, if you know anything about ornamentals. But uh, I just wouldn't use it on really young plants. I'd avoid that, wait till the plants get up and going. And that's why I had this talk today, I guess, that you need, we really need these herbicides. Surfland was a very useful tool for us. You know, it's not that great of a herbicide Surfland is, but when you tank mix it with Simazine, what I try to tell people it brings to the table is safety. And it's not so much if it works really well, it's if it's not going to hurt blueberry plants in that first you know, year or two when they're really sensitive to damage by, you know, different pesticides and you're trying to get that with the limiting, you know, and, and surf landing and for example, same a lot of the weed competition, provide the most seed that you can. And once those plants get up over 10, 18 to 24 inches tall, switch over to Diuron, Allion, Zeus products, I would jump to immediately. And uh, or and Chateau, sorry, forgot that one. Those four give you a really good different modes of action and provide really good weed control and are fairly safe on plants when used properly. All right, and then you just have a, a request for your email address, Mark. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, do we type it or it's just mac30 at uga.edu? Did you get that? Mac tool M A C. C3030 at and then UGA for University of Georgia and then dot edu for education if you need it. All right. And then one more question with all the new safer products, would you still use Velpar in late winter? Um, Velpar depends where you're at and how much soil organic matter you have. Uh, I really I don't even trial Velpar anymore. Uh, it just we get too many damage issues because of low organic matter. It depends where you're at. If some in North Carolina people love it, if you use it and like it and it works well, hey man, have at it. Uh, it's still a great herbicide, works pretty well. Um, but the problem is, is damage to your blueberry plants. You got to familiar with that product. But if you're using it, with it be fine. Um, but uh, I think Allianz a far superior product to that. That 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 to Velpar as a pre-emergent herbicide. All right, seeing no more questions, thank you again, Mark, and thank you everyone for attending. I believe that will conclude this final presentation for today. Thank you all for attending Southeast Regional Fruit and Vegetable Conference. Have a great night.